Hello tanks and tankettes and welcome to the first standalone tank replay of the year. At some point I'm going to have to stop doing that, you know, there's only going to be so many firsts of the year. Anyway, so I've picked out one of my own. It is a relatively recent game, although not that recent. It's from 916, so we're probably talking, I don't know, month, month and a half, something like that. And it is the mighty KV-5. Now this is actually a KV-5 platoon. I'm there with Patreon supporter I be the one true nub. Unfortunately for him, however, he's going to have a rather naff game, and it's mostly going to be because of the enemy artillery. Now, this thing does not like artillery. Well, most tanks don't like artillery, but it's not like this can dodge out the way especially well, and uh, Nub there is going to find that out to his cost. So this is a tier 9 game with those two arties, it might be a bit nasty. The enemy team also has a fair proportion of tank destroyers, Although not that many, and both teams have a failed platoon. Both teams have tier 6 tanks. Now, on our side, it is a KV-13 and a KV-85, and it's just, I don't know, uh, bad luck on their part that they got a tier 9 game. I mean, that was the risk they ran, but obviously they were hoping for a, a tier 7 or tier 8 game. But on the enemy team, it's a Hellcat and an IS-3. So that Hellcat was going to get shafted no matter what. Anyway, so we know the enemy M103 is here, so I've got the APCR loaded. All APCR is not equal, of course, um, with the uh, APCR on the KV-5. You don't get all that much pen. You've still got less pen than most of the, uh, the regular tier 8 heavies. In fact, it's exactly the same for the, uh, the likes of the IS-6 as well. So you'll see me slinging around a comparatively high amount of APCR in this game, but it is absolutely necessary when you're playing the KV-5 and meeting tier 9s, even a lot of tier 8s. The, uh, the 107mm that you've got, which is basically the same as on the T-150, um, it's adequate for side shots against most tanks that you'll meet, but frontally, yeah, you need that extra pen. You do have a good DPM, however. So ideally we would be pushing this and being aggressive, but uh, I don't want to trade away that much health yet. And almost certainly I would take some additional hits from that uh, M103 and the VK, because the KV-5 of course has got that honking great big weak spot on the front. It's kind of hard to miss. So really it's just a matter of trying to whittle down their health and pushing when it seems appropriate. Now, Nub is about to die, unfortunately. He'd taken a lot of damage from artillery. I've just taken a hit myself, but uh, with that VK dead, with the other tanks dead, uh, it's just the M103, so we basically got this flank. However, this was most of our muscle down at this end of the map, and the enemy top tiers, most of whom were mediums, have pushed around the north. We did have some tanks defending, but they were lower tiers and squashy things like the Rheinmetall, so they haven't fared very well, unsurprisingly. At this point, if they seriously wanted to cap, they probably could, and we'd be very hard pressed to stop them. But that isn't what's going to happen. These guys are basically going to decide they want the extra damage. It's 6 9, and <laughs> that's me. Um, very unsociably ramming into the back of our M103. I was uh, not even aware it was in front of me, but okay, there we go, I know now. Uh, yeah, they decide they want the extra damage, they want the extra uh, XP and credits, and although it does look like they've got a very healthy lead, sometimes that healthy lead can crumble surprisingly fast. Are you still there? So that's a pocket of enemy tank destroyers, that M1's just been punished hard. We know the Rheinmetall was defending their base. He might come behind us, but for now everything is to our front. We also do possibly have to watch out for artillery though. Are you still there? I'm not sure. I mean, there might be one or two frame rate derps here and oh, that, uh, that Hellcat, poor Hellcat. Well, he brought it on himself. Um, yeah, I. it's one of these things, it's funny when you're recording with Bandicam sometimes, it'll uh, you'll be watching the replay as it's recording and it looks like it's all staying over 60 and then you'll get the video file into into uh, Vegas and realize that uh, actually no, it, it's dipped at some places rather annoyingly. So I have been shot in the front and the rear whilst 
noticing that rhyme at all, the M103 has had exactly the same thing happen to him, and so both of us are now not on a lot of health. So uh, that was a bit of a whoopsie. I shouldn't have really tried to peek out again. I mean, I figured I was probably fine from not uh, from not uh, getting shot from behind, but I was completely wrong. So I've lost most of my remaining health. I'm now one shot for most everything. So unlike some of my earlier shots where I got rather lucky with uh, uh, not having to fully aim, that one didn't go in, but this next one, there we go, that not only goes in, but it is a penetrating HE roll, so hopefully I did some damage. So if I take him out, that's that rate of fire coming in useful. Fortunately the Scorpion only tracks me, and then the M1 decides to charge in, and I just take a bit of a panic shot, but uh, it doesn't matter because the T-54 rolls down and saves me. The Scorpion, however, has killed the M103, so that's not so good. So it's now myself, this T-54, and a Type 4 Heavy who's on very low health indeed. And we could try and, and like, the T-54 could take the hit from the Scorpion. We could try and trade here, but we can both see that Type 4 Heavy creeping in behind this guy. So there's basically no point in taking the risk. We can just let this guy come round behind, put in a shot... In theory, the Scorpion then turns his turret to, to, to look round, and one of us takes the kill shot. So, here we go, the Type 4. I mean, it's a bit of a slow flank, but you can't really do anything else in a Type 4 Heavy, so there we go. Absolutely as planned. Well, more or less, anyway. I mean, sometimes you just do these things and hope that teammates are thinking the same things you're thinking. In this case, they were. So that has brought us down to three versus three. We just lost our... Batchat artillery. So um, yeah, they did have quite a healthy lead. Now, not so much. This is on a complete knife edge. They've still got two of their own arty though, and all of us potentially could be one-shotted by them, especially the, uh, the, the tier 9. That is a rather nasty beast. The remaining enemy tank is also potentially dangerous, the T-54E1. If he's got his heat loaded, well, those shells do quite a lot of damage, so uh, even the APCR could easily pen my tank, but uh, as it is, well, the T-54 takes a hit, and then the Type 4 Heavy gets the kill from back there. That was a heck of a lucky shot. Well, I say that, you know, it might have been a very carefully aimed shot, but over that distance with the Type 4 Heavy gun, it's not a sniper gun by any means, so... Uh, Yes, that just leaves the artillery. So, myself and the T-54 are going around uh, this way, the Type 4 Heavy, rather than... I mean, why would he drive around here? So he's just reversed direction and he's going the other way. Potentially, one of these artillery could spot us for the other one, but there's three of us and two of them, so they can't kill all of us. Surely. Surely! You know, this is this is come down to being favourable on our side, but surely, uh, you know, it can't go wrong from this point. Well, we'll see. <laughs> Hopefully not. So there's one. That's fine. I don't get spotted when I uh, uh, fire my gun and, and make the kill, but unfortunately the T-54 clearly was spotted. So he's now done, but he got himself a top gun before he died, so he's probably done very well for himself, and, you know, T-54 in this matchmaking if you're a half-decent player, you probably could do very well for yourself quite easily. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm not Are trying to denigrate his skill here. He, he will get a, a quite a good result out of this. So, try for a, a very narrow shot myself on the uh, GW Tiger. The Type 4, again, getting a, a really good... Like, that wasn't much of a, a target. And then the GW backed up and, and made it just that bit easier for me to get his final few hit points and the final kill. So, score-wise, that was nothing spectacular. Um, first class mastery and a bunch of ribbons. I did um, however much damage we're going to see in a second. Any second now. Right, there we go. <laughs> 2700. Not that impressive. The T-54 over 4k with 6 kills. Type 4 Heavy had nearly 4000 damage. But because I was bottom tier, I actually got the best score there. And a nub there with zero, but he wasn't the only one. He was definitely not the only one. And lastly, the profit screen. Well, even with shooting those premium rounds, they were premium rounds that did damage. And with the rest of the damage that I did, 
with the little bit of spotting and assistance that I got, I also made a pretty reasonable profit. I mean, if I'd shot only AP and done that amount of damage, I could have made more profit. But if I'd shot only AP, I never would have penned that, uh, that M103, or at least it would have been much more difficult to do so. So there we are, the KV-5. I still do like to take this out from time to time. There was no glorious ramming action in this one, but uh, it's a nice tank for being aggressive. It does have that weak spot, but that makes it more attractive for being aggressive, because if you're pushing in and, and getting in people's faces, and it makes, them, makes things harder for them in terms of trying to properly aim. Almost weirdly, even though it's the, the slower tank, um, or maybe because it's the slower tank, the KV-4 is, I almost feel, the better defensive machine. Um, but it also doesn't have that, that turn of speed that the, the KV-5 has, even though they do, of course, have the same engine. So, yeah, the KV-5 still has enough over the KV-4 uh, to, to make it different and interesting, even though the gun is sometimes quite frustrating. So there we are, a uh, bit of my own gameplay. Hopefully you have enjoyed it. And if you have, you can leave any comments below, you can hit the like button, you can sub to my channel if you haven't already, and as always, stay tuned for more.